is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, here we go, everybody. Here's your Wednesday night numbers and why this week is different. AW Dynamite, 845,000 viewers for Wednesday night's show on TNT, topping the 615,000 that NXT averaged on the USA Network. So, AW beat them by... Pretty much a quarter million viewers. Gap of 230,000, the highest since March 18, which was the first close-set broadcast of the pandemic era for either show. Dynamite up 7.2% in total viewers from last week. 18 to 49, the show was fifth on cable, with a 0.32 rating, up 10% from last Wednesday, matching Dynamite's best number since March. 845,000 total viewers, best for the show since March 18th, which featured the long-promoted reveal of the Exalted One and the debut of Matt Hardy. NXT was down 2.5% in total viewers from last Wednesday, had its lowest audience total since May 20. Show was up 21%, 18 to 49, averaging a .17, to finish 35th in the cable ratings for the category. Combined audience of 1.46 million, up 3% from last week. AW dominated... The individual demo categories, except as always, people over 50. Although, it was 0.33 NXT to 0.31 AEW. So AEW is closing in on the final demo that NXT has an advantage in. AEW doubled and in some cases tripled NXT in most of the other categories. Their strongest category was males 18-34. to where they had an advantage of 0.44 to 0.23. In the men 12 to 34 category, where NXT cratered last week, NXT was up slightly to a 0.04 as compared to a W0.14. So a few things, then I have more. Last week's 12 to 17 and 18 to 34 numbers for NXT were appalling. Males 12 to 17, and males 18 to 34. So basically, males 12 to 34. Remember how old you were when you first started watching wrestling? When you first got into it? Males 12 to 34. AEW beat NXT by 10 times. Not double, not triple. AEW had 10 times as many viewers in males... 12-34 to than NXT did. NXT, as noted, they ended up uh, 34 or whatever, but the thing that no one talked about in this article here is that if you look at the cable ratings where it's ranked by adults 18-49, to that's men and women, adults 18-49, to AW is number 5. In males 18-49, to AW was number one on cable. They beat every other show in males 18 to 49. From the Observer here, what was noteworthy, Wednesday night was the biggest night for 18 to 49 viewers, which was which has happened before but should never happen since Friday, has all the advantage of being available in so many more homes and on a broadcast network channel, Fox. It was a shift of younger viewers. For the first time in history, AEW was number one for the week in a demo. And it is one that you would not guess. AEW, with competition, had 58,000 women 18 to 34 this past week. Ahead of Raw at 55,000. Ahead of SmackDown at 43,000. In overall 18 to 34... AEW had 129,000, just slightly below 143,000 for Raw and 144,000 for SmackDown. But AEW had head-to-head competition. Without it, would have passed up both Raw and SmackDown in the 18 to 34 demo, including NXT. Wednesday had 183,000 viewers, 18 to 34, 445,000, 35 to 49. Monday had 143,000, etc., etc., etc. So. We are seeing a shift. These younger viewers are moving away from Raw and SmackDown, and they are now watching wrestling on Wednesdays. And that is AEW at NXT. 
And AEW is getting the benefit of most of those younger viewers because NXT is having a very, very hard time with young viewers. Mike, your thoughts, and then I got to talk about this NXT lineup issue. Uh, one, I'm waiting now on, will it be Sammy or Chris Jericho, who now starts calling AEW and Wednesday Ladies Night uh, for the demo that they're pulling over there? Because um, that'll probably happen at some point. Whether you like it or not, is AEW a younger feeling show? Is it a younger looking show? Does it look different? Is it more unique? Is it as antiseptic as, say, NXT or really anything that Raw or SmackDown does? One of the biggest complaints about Raw and about SmackDown and WWE programming is it essentially has looked the same and felt the same for 30 years now, you know, ever since the, the Attitude Era began. And. The Attitude Era is still the number one, probably, uh, component of wrestling fans or makes up the the biggest component of wrestling fans, uh, those and older folks. And all of the new people that come in, they have watched a lot of independent wrestling. They are now exposed to more than we ever were, different styles than, than we ever were. We saw arguably as much wrestling as they did, but they're seeing it from a lot different points of view. And we talked about characters and lots of other things of why AEW is going to continue in these tough times to to grow, I think, small, and it's going to be a grind for them. I mean, nobody should be doing backflips over their numbers. They're nice, but still you want to look at a lot bigger numbers as you grow this thing because it's got to grow. It's a business. It needs to do that. But they are in the best position to do it compared to what WWE needs to do. And, you know, the one guy that WWE had there that was looking to do that and Paul Heyman is not in position to do that anymore. And they continue to go back to the same old tropes and the same old problems that they have. And these numbers are going to continue to atrophy for them, especially as long as this pandemic goes on for.